All right, um, I'm going to call this meeting to order. Um, this is a special meeting. Um, as far as uh, the roll call is concerned, let the record show that um, all members of the Planning Commission are present except for the following. Let's see, Matt Reed and Lori Asplin. Actually, um, I, I guess I could say they, they um, because they weren't here when we started this process, uh, we've been advised that the two alternates, Chris Till and Jerry Sims, uh, pretty much have to stay in this process, have the right to vote on this conditional use. So, um, so uh, yes, and that's why Matt Reed and Lori Asklin are not here. Uh, so at any rate, um, we have, um, let's see, we have uh, uh, Tamara Ennis is here from, uh, she's village zoning. We've got the interim village manager, Kent Bristol, here. Um, so anyway, let's take a look at the agenda, you guys. Um, uh, what I plan on doing tonight, and we're, we're going to review the minutes because we have we have to get those minutes approved, um, and then we have to recognize the communications. Uh, when we get down to the public hearing section, we're going to do two things. We're going to we're going to start out with site plan review. When we're done with site plan review, then we're going to roll into a continuation of the public hearing of July or June 9th. Um, and we're going to try to get through this process tonight. So we're going to, you know, we're going to be, um, we're going to allow public comment, but we're going to we're going to make it short. We're going to do the two minute thing once again. So at any rate, that's. Um, <coughs> are we ready to roll? Yes. Okay. Um, the minutes. We need we need to go through the minutes. <coughs> the the June 9th, 2014 minutes. Okay, page one. Are there any corrections? I actually have one in that I didn't note the presence of the <coughs> village solicitor, which I have corrected on mine, and there was one additional communication that I've also added to those minutes. Um, okay. So okay. Okay. <coughs> um, any, anything else on page one? Page two. Page three. Page four. Page five. Page six. Page seven. We've just closed the public hearing. Okay, go ahead, Bill. Uh, on page seven, uh, the second paragraph, it's a typo, I'm sure. But Bob Baldwin said he was concerned about the lack of homework, yep. not lack of homework. Very good. <laughs> Very good. <coughs> okay, page seven. Anything else? Page eight. Page nine. Page ten. Page 11. Page 12. Page 13. You know, in the old days, we used to have minutes that were maybe only one or two pages long. <laughs> okay, so um, do I have a motion to approve the minutes as amended? So made. Second. Second. Okay, so all in favor? Say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, minutes are approved as amended. Okay, good. Moving on. Okay, communications. Um, okay, the last meeting, I guess, um, Judy, you just sort of went down and uh, you know, sort of generalized what was given us. So do you want to go ahead and? Eek. Eek. Um, well, I'm going to hope that I get this correct. Uh, we had Phil King, Jalen Rowe, Laura Ellison, Stephen Rowe, uh, Chad Stiles, uh, 
speaking against the solar array, and I believe we had Shirley Christensen, Barbara Sanborn, uh, Harvey Page, Bob Parker, and Kathleen and Jeremy Buck speaking for the solar array, and John Eastman again um, uh, with uh, drainage issues addressed. And then there was a letter from Yellow Springs Open Space Committee uh, at some length refuting uh, <coughs> points in the uh, zoning code uh, for conditional use. And that was a fairly lengthy and specific communication. Very good. So all these will go into the. Um, and I do, and you have one at your spot from Richard Lapides, which is in favor of. Oh, okay, yeah, not tonight. Okay, these, these will all go into the record. Um, and these were all in our packets. <coughs> okay, uh, citizen comments. Now, th this is a this is a <coughs> brief moment in our meeting in which, um, if 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 the audience here has any concerns about planning related um, items that aren't currently on our agenda, which is the this solar array, uh, now's the time. Do you have any questions? Oh, we do. Okay, right here in the back. Yeah. You you need to come up to the microphone. Okay. <coughs> State your name. <coughs> Good evening. I am Brent Boyd, Chief Operating Officer of Silver Power and Light. Uh, in the readings that you just made, you mentioned materials that you had received right. prior to this meeting. Right. And I know that we, both Silver Power and Light and Antioch, had submitted documents as well that you did not read. Okay. So I'm just wondering if you can acknowledge those. We will acknowledge those, yes. Okay, thank you. Okay. Yeah, those, you. Are, those are not considered communications. Right. They're part of the petition. Right. We, we did get those. Okay. They were in our package. <coughs> okay, so uh, no, no comments. Um, okay, so here we go. Um, site plan review. Site, site plan review is required under a conditional use. And it's a level B um, site plan review. Normally a level A, um, staff will do it, and we don't, we don't need to go through a formal process of approving it. But this happens to be a level B because, it, because it's conditional use, and we have to approve this. Um, and the college has submitted a new site plan, so I guess my First thing is, Tamara, you, you've uh, you've seen this new site plan, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. And you've had a chance to review it. Yes. Okay. Do you have any comments? Uh, well, I can I can state that they have identified the, um, the specifically what the power from the solar array will be used for. They show it on the plan that uh, they have. Uh, they show in the plan that they have um, that the electricity will go into the um, geothermal plant to run the pumps for the geothermal field. And number two, these are the conditions of, that I had um, stated in the staff recommendation. Number two was that they needed to identify all existing utilities on the site within the street right of way. And uh, they have identified those. They were not able to identify in all cases the size of the pipes or the type of material in some cases for like the water line but they showed the location on here of where the water lines were at um, they could only you know give the information they were able to get from the village um, and and you know the size of those things really aren't important right now because they're not tapping into that water line and they're you know they the lines that they're crossing they do know the size of those okay um, number three was they needed to identify the electric service lines where they will cross the existing right of way, and they have done that. And then um, Johnny Burns had provided you with a letter or a memo, an email, saying how he expects that um, those electric lines that will cross over the undeveloped um, <coughs> Herman Street right of way, how he expects those to be. Uh, installed and um, the developers are aware of that that they need to go underneath the sanitary line and um, but but regardless they need to that that will occur when they they're ready to do that they'll have to get a permit to do work within the right of way and they they have to comply with whatever the electric department says the requirements are okay and we need we need to have that noted on this site plan um, well they note the location which is what all they can really show on on the site plan they would have to have 
you know, plans and profiles okay, to, to, you know, but they don't, they'll have to provide Johnny with whatever he needs to have right. for that when they get to that point. Um, they're also going to place signage at each of the, each end of the crossings of the electrical crossings so that, um, it, that if they have to do any repairs on the sanitary sewer line that runs just south of the undeveloped Herman Street right away, then they'll know where that's at. Um, let's see. The four was they needed to identify the geothermal well locations and label the central geothermal plant building, and they've done that on this new plan. They needed to identify the location of the pedestrian bike path and label Glen Helen, and they've, they have done that on the plan. They needed to provide dimensions on the plans for the area of the solar array field, and, and that's identified on the <coughs> plan. Uh, they needed to identify the sanitary sewer main in the cross section, and they do provide a, an updated cross section on the plan. Um, they needed to provide an east-west cross-section identifying how the line of sight will be affected from the pedestrian bike path. And they, so they've shown all those things that you actually now you have three pages with the new drawing instead of the one page. Um, so they've, they've satisfied all those conditions that we had had from the last report. Okay, good. Good, very good. Okay, the next part of this process is when, when they when they submit a a, uh, a revised plan, uh, we, we we basically need to ask for comments from the departments, the electrical department, and what is it, uh, uh, sewer. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're, we're going to ask for the electrical representative to come up and sort of give his analysis of what's going on and recommendations. Hello, I'm Johnny Burns, electric superintendent. Uh, as Tamara stated, that I did request for the electric lines to be two foot below the sanitation line uh, with four inches of concrete on top of the uh, electric lines. That, however, did not get related to the drawing. <coughs> Instead, they're citing the National Electric Code, oh, which just, is yeah on the drawing now so as these drawings stand I can't approve these drawings because mm -hmm. they didn't install what I asked them to put on the print. Okay. So other than that the only issues that I have is is they are missing the Dayton Power and Light uh, power lines that go down Allen Street. Uh, we do not okay. have the power lines on Allen Street that is Dayton Power and Lights and for the drawings we think that there will be nothing there. Okay. Okay, that's it. All right, very good. Okay, sewer. Um, Jason Handy, Village of Beale Springs. Um, the first plans that uh, they submitted to us, um, I uh, rejected because they had the fence over top of our sanitary line. And I said that we were not going to be responsible should we have an emergency backup and tearing that fence down or replacing it. Um, per their second drawing and now this drawing, um, it looks to be five feet off our southern edge of our sanitary. So that's perfect for us. Okay. Uh, so we won't have anything to worry about. There. Okay. And that's it? That's it for me. Oh. Uh, Johnny already talked about the depth and everything so our village crews can work safely. Okay, very good. If we have any backups. Good. Let, let me ask Jason. Um, the sewer is in a an undeveloped road right of way. I think it's only 20 feet. Is that right? Yes, it's 20 feet. Um, you're, you're not aware of any plans the village has to actually pave and develop that as a no, sir. traffic artery. Okay. No, sir. Uh, nope. um, actually, the sanitary sewer line is south of the undeveloped well, village not right of way. Okay. It was well, not an easement. <coughs> it's south it's of, right the, of, of the right of way that that, okay. that they don't have any, you know, they don't. It's not part of the Antioch parcel at all. Okay, but it's within the twenty-five foot yes. setback. Okay, that, that's what I thought you were asking. All right. all right, thank you. Very good. <coughs> okay, um, th those notes will have to be on our ha have to be on the plan in some form or fashion, and we'll get to that. <coughs> towards the end here. Okay. Um, does 
anyone else have anything um, uh, new information uh, regarding this uh, pertaining to the uh, site plan? Reggie. We uh, also identified the sinkholes locations and made some modifications to the layout to avoid the existing sinkholes. And today the sinkholes were filled just FYI for public safety. Okay. Hey, any questions? Can no. I, yeah. Yeah. Jerry? On, on the new uh, map that we got in your proposed layout, there's a space between, I guess would be row four if you're looking from the bottom up, where there were panels and the Senkos and you, you had removed those panels. Did they go somewhere else or did you just eliminate the panels out of there? Yes, please. Brent Boyd, uh, Chief Operating Officer, Solar Power and Light. <coughs> uh, we removed the panels, as you see, uh, from the location of the sinkholes, and we did redistribute them okay. to other parts of the uh, array design. Okay. Yes. And uh, without changing the, the overall footprint or the, uh, or the fence line. Right. Th those stayed that, intact. It, not to help, because I noticed that, you know, you had given the length of the shortest group and then the length of the longest. So the, the overall longest length didn't change. Um, whatever the overall longest length is now <coughs> is stated on drawing. Okay. Can't say whether that changed okay. or not. Okay, I I'm uh, I'm advised that I have to, I have to receive all these all comments and before we go into our our. Um, our review. So, anything else from anybody <coughs> back here? Hi, my name is Zachary Sullivan. Uh, I'm a student at Antioch College. Um, I'm, I'm unfamiliar with this process, so I'm not entirely sure that this is the moment for this. I'll, I'll let you know just as soon as you get into it. So, this is a letter of support that the community drafted. No, we don't need it. This is, this is about site plan. This Only is a, for the plan. Yes, yes. So you, we, we'll get you later on. Okay. Okay. I need to get through this process. Thank you. Okay. John, I, I would like to mention one other thing, too. The new site plan also, and, and it's a little not very bold in its print, but if you've all noticed on the, the area along Corey Street, they have also provided um, a note and some like just a bubble where they're talking about where, where the, they're willing to fill in what they're proposing is to fill in the vegetative screening uh, to provide a vegetative screening along Corey Street where there's you know the gap between the trees and mm -hmm. I don't know if you all were able to, to note that um, that they do and what they'll do is they'll work with the village tree committee to optimize the species that they'll be using in there okay, okay. it's a it's not very bold on the drawing, but if you notice. We're, we're going to get to screening here in just a second. Okay. Okay, okay so at any rate, um, okay, so now we're, now, now as per, per section 1268-04, the PC, we, we need to uh, approve or deny or approve with conditions this site plan, and we need to go through the criteria uh, that is that is articulated here. So um, I'm going to go ahead and re read the review standards, and we're going to go th through this one at a time. And this is going to be the same process we do when we go get get into the conditional use. Um, okay, it says the site plan must comply with all standards of this chapter and all applicable requirements of this code and other applicable laws and regulations. Okay, at this point, since we've, we've, we've had the review here, I'm, I'm assuming that this is, this has been complied with. Okay, B here says, the site must be designed in a manner that is harmonious to the greatest extent possible with the character of the surrounding area. Okay, Bill, you want to weigh in on this? Well, certainly, um 
the the um, as it will appear on Corey Street at least with the additional plantings and I know that they have um, already committed themselves to planting a hundred trees on the property uh, and if they work and the uh, drawing says that they will work with the tree committee to uh, buffer the uh, the site of it uh, it certainly will uh, lend itself to blending in with that part of our village on the other side we have uh, the Glen, of course, and we, sh we should have something that's pretty representative I think they are. on the, uh, what would be the west side, the Corey Street. Right. So I, I think they are making every attempt. Okay, okay, very good. Tim, do you have anything to add? Nothing <coughs> to add right there. <coughs> Jerry? Uh, yeah, I guess I have a question, and I guess I would either direct it to um, Jason or, or Johnny in terms of this added vegetation and trees, will that have any, any impact on us? I don't know if you guys saw this or not, but it will not have any impact on us. The power was your own other side of the Okay, Chris Still. John, is compatibility where we consider the noise issue? No. It's the next one. No. Nothing no. further than that. No, no. I think this is this is a pretty subjective um, <coughs> idea. And what's what's key in here is uh, what what they what they say here is to the greatest extent possible, which leaves a lot of latitude. Exactly. So you know you know and and. <coughs> I mean, you have any other comments? Oh, okay. So, so, so you know, so most of the vegetation is 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 going to stay. Uh, most of the trees are going to stay. Um, <coughs> so, I, you know, to the greatest extent possible, I think, as far as the site plan is concerned, um, I, I I I think uh, you can we can we can say this has been reasonably achieved. Okay. So, shall we move on? Okay, the site must be designed to minimize hazards to adjacent property and reduce the negative effects of traffic, noise, smoke, fumes, and glare to the maximum extent possible. I'm going to go around the table again. Bill? Well, uh, the such, well, dust it shouldn't be a factor, uh, noise, at least by by going to Cedarville, and I also went to Cedarville as Jerry did, and listened to uh, their array, which is two and a half times larger than this one, and, and looking at the uh, equipment, um, I don't believe that we'll have a noise problem. Th there has been some issues raised about glare, and of course the. Uh, provider of the solar cells uh, talks about the fact that up up to as much as 30 percent of the light could be reflected and I, I this being the, the longest day very close to the longest day um, I, I really wanted to know what the angle of the Sun was and and so at noontime I went out and did a little <laughs> experiment <laughs> Someplace in my home, I'm sure I have the exact uh, angle that, uh, but in fact, uh, this, th this, is, this is just a, a real simple kind of, of test. This, of course, being level. <coughs> this line here is at a 30 degree angle to the level, which is at the bottom. Okay. Um, that's the angle at which the solar cells will be placed. The green line shows the angle uh, of the sun as it uh, was beaming down at noontime. And the red line shows the angle of reflection. Uh, and it's a basic engineering uh, 
fact that if you if you're bouncing if if you're reflecting light against a flat surface, and these panels are pretty flat, um, that this, the angle of incident will be the same angle at which it uh, is reflected. And, and uh, what will happen, this being summertime, the green line will, will come down as the sun goes to the south, and there's a point at which the light will be reflected right back at the sun, and beyond that, it will be reflected upwards. Uh, it, it's a very simple kind of thing. Uh, the angle, th this red angle, is, is, would be the worst angle that we could face. And with the, the trees which are left along the driveway going to the Antioch School, uh, they will be beneath this red line. So consequently, we should not have a glare <coughs> problem from these uh, panels, whatever they do reflect. Uh, you know, it's a very basic kind of thing, but uh, I, th I believe that the glare problem, while it is always uh, there, uh, the potential, uh, <coughs> is, is not going to be very um, much of a problem in this application. Uh, so. Okay. Okay, Tim. Um, you're only showing one transformer on the for the whole project. You have one transformer. Well, tra we have the conic transformer, not inverters. No, the inverters are on the panels themselves. <coughs> but the transformer that you show with the line going to the physical plant um, is that the only one that's in the for the whole project? Center one transformer. One, yes, one. And that's. Uh, is it going to have fans on it? Is it going to have fans on it to uh, cool it? If necessary. Well, okay, I got a question on it. If necessary. Your, your literature says that this is going to what? It does, the decibel uh, rating is not to, going to exceed, what is it, 0.65 decibels or so? It's within, within our, come on up. Red Boy, CEO, COO, Silicon Light. Um, what I mean by if necessary, we are buying an off-the-shelf transformer. It's not one that we are building ourselves. Mm -hmm. And so um, if it has a fan as part of its normal operation, then it will have a fan. If it doesn't need a fan based on air-cooled characteristics of a transformer, then it would not. So I wasn't being facetious. I was just saying that we are buying a General Electric uh, transformer that may or may not require a fan. If it requires a fan, and so then we also provided a specification for the transformer that we intend to use whose decibel ratings uh, take into account whether it has a fan or not a fan. And okay. so we then discussed the implications of the decibel ratings based on the specs of the transformer in our documentation to you. The, uh, what I was kind of wondering if, if because you can direct the noise of the fan, you can direct the <coughs> transformer, change its position so you're, if it is a noisy or on one side of the, the unit, <coughs> yes. you can change its position so it's directed like towards so. the glen, so it's not heading towards residential areas. The way we determine impact of noise based on the DB level of the transformer and the inverters is using the engineering calculation for the, the, uh, the degradation of sound over distance. So you start at say 65 decibels and as you get 150 feet away then it, it, it drops. And so we, we explained in the documentation that by the time you reach the distance of any you know, residence that the sound levels will be well below the, uh, the code. Now if you're standing right next to it, that's different. Um, if there would be a requirement to direct the um, transformers in a certain direction, we, we would have that latitude if you were to impose those well, requirements. I can say, I just, if it depends on your <coughs> type of unit that you have, I guess, as yes. far as where it needs to be positioned. Do we know if the transformer has a fan window? Um, <laughs> no, I don't. Okay. Specific. We can provide that information if necessary. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Jerry. Mm -hmm. Chris. I also went out to the Cedarville Solar Array 
uh, like Bill offhand, I don't think glare is going to be an issue. They're not. Uh, they're not like mirrors. They're actually sort of this uh, a dull, dull charcoal colored. Uh, I do have some concern about the noise issue. Uh, when I first went into the Cedarville array, I drove all the way back, sort of by the mulching plant there, and you couldn't hear anything. You hear the birds chirping. I couldn't hear a, a thing. But then when I left, I stopped my, uh, I stopped and I got out uh, at the first house closest to the array, and that's where these boxes are that help me out are those the transformers those the inverters those separate the, the it's an inverter okay they're about <coughs> six foot tall and eight foot wide or something like that and uh, they hum uh, it, it's about like um, like a residential air conditioner or something you know if you're outside somebody's house and you can see they got their air conditioner hmm, you could hear the hum I walked uh, a length of a lot away which was maybe 50 feet and and, and you couldn't uh, you couldn't hear it. I did also notice at the Cedarville array, they had I'll call it a some sort of sound baffling fence between these inverter boxes and uh, the folks whose house is right there. And it, it wasn't just a thin plank fence. I mean, these it's some sort of I was assuming a sound baffling fence because it's kind of thick. Block it. You know. uh, yeah, yeah, a sound blocking fence, but. You know, again, when you when you walked about 50 feet away from it, you couldn't hear it. And I've got probably average hearing, um, but that's why my understanding is that's why they've located uh, the Antioch array, sort of in the tucked in that called the far corner <coughs> of that field where there isn't yeah, right. any any houses or any residences. Because of the noise? Is yeah, because of the noise it, that, that houses aren't going to be able to. Is that right? That's correct. Okay. That's one of the reasons it's where it is. Okay. I, I do have one question. I think a lot of the concerns people sort of have is this aesthetic concern that, gosh, this thing's going to be ugly to look at or drive by. So with the eight foot fence, remind me, is there going to be like a, some sort of opaque material lattice through the fence so you can't see it, or is it just going to be a, an open chain link fence like they have in Cedarville? Open chain link. Uh, we do have plans. <coughs> enhance it aesthetically with art. Right. Okay, and, and we have the authority to... What is that? It's all opaque them. material that they thread through these yes. chain link fences. You mean enhance it with art? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> no, but we're, we're going to get to that. What, what, let's, just, let's just leave that one alone right now, and we're going to come back to that. Um, so when we go, when I weigh in on this, first of all, not to be outdone by these guys, I also went out and visited that <laughs> <laughs> And I was there when Jerry was there. It was it was sort of ironic because you know uh, I go I go there to look at the array, and by towards there's Jerry. <laughs> you know, it's like what are you doing here? Um, hey, I was shocked the same way. There you go. Because <laughs> <laughs> I you know, didn't recognize you. There you go. <laughs> Why I've, I've gotten older? Is that what it is? <laughs> it was a hot day. Hot day. <laughs> Anyhow, um, the noise. I was totally unaware of any noise until it was pointed out to me. Um, you know, you drive through the gate, the transformers are sitting there, and then you know, you look at the arrays. Um, noise, I, I was basically unaware until it was pointed out. Uh, as far as the glare is concerned, well, you know, we didn't see evidence of glare that day, and that's not to say that there's not glare. Uh, we've been assured that they're, they're using material on these arrays to reduce it to 30 percent or something to that effect so in my opinion they've satisfied this particular um, section here uh, let me see so let, let, let's let's move on to to, um, to D now D is a is a series of, of things of items that some apply and some of them don't first uh, number two apply go ahead John, wh which section are you reading from? I'm am am I'm, I'm still under review standards. I'm at I'm at D two under twelve what twelve sixty eight oh six oh five oh six I'm sorry oh six that's where we start twelve sixty six what twelve sixty eight oh six right now we're uh, um, on we're on, on the site plan. we're on D on site plan on D. Uh, traffic circulation does not apply. 
No. Number I have one. a question about that. <laughs> then go ahead. Um, <coughs> yes, you're showing a sidewalk on the drawing to uh, replace, I guess, the sidewalk that's kind of sidewalk that goes between Antioch and the amphitheater, Antioch School and the amphitheater. You show a future things. Do we have to worry about the drainage of that sidewalk versus the future drive is what I'm thinking of. <coughs> it's on the site. Is that something that we need to worry about at this point in time? I mean, I don't think so. Okay. Hey, anybody else have any input? Okay, we can always come back to this. But yeah. I just was wondering about that. Just, just for the sake of moving on here, stormwater. Stormwater is applicable. So, <coughs> um... <coughs> And it's worthy of some discussion here. Now, my recommendation to you guys is this on stormwater. John Eastman wrote a, an analysis of this, and he backed it up a second time. Um, and um, I had a conversation with Matt Reed regarding this. And Matt Reed um, would accept, and I would accept John's analysis and recommend, it, and recommend that you do. We need, the feeling is we need um, it to be professionally backed up. This is, the way this thing was written, in my opinion, this is a, a personal opinion based upon years of experience. We can require a outside firm to come in and to give us an analysis, <coughs> or we can ask John, can, can John put his stamp on that? See, that's what I would prefer. So legally, Somebody standing behind this thing. <coughs> hmm. Now, um, you know, if that's the case, we can get John to do this. And, I, and my recommendation on, on this particular thing is that John's addressed it well, and I don't think it's a problem. Bill. Well, uh, certainly John did an excellent job, I think, uh, giving the background. And I understand that the, the sinkholes have been filled. That's correct. So that uh, they're not a problem anymore. Although I'm not sure we understand why they developed there, but uh, <coughs> you know that does happen. The, the feeling is they'll but, continue to come back. But go right, ahead. Yeah, the the only thing that that you can say is that how often do we have a storm like we did two weeks ago? That's the first time in probably 50 years. And what will happen is that the chain link fence will. Uh, collect whatever refuse is washed down. And as John has pointed out, it is so low that uh, it will make one huge uh, detention basin. And the, 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 the residents who, of course, are on the west side should have no fear about water backing up to their <coughs> homes. I, as I understand, that's what John is saying. Right. We're going to have John up here in a second. OK. Uh, Tim. That's those were Jerry. Well, if you follow that discussion, if it didn't make a reservoir, it's got to then run someplace. Well, it'll it'll percolate through for sure. We're we're not talking about a okay because okay, yeah, a big real block. Oh yeah. Create an onslaught or whatever was sitting behind it. And, uh, yeah. but it appears that it'll probably go toward the glen. Oh yes, it is going toward the glen. Okay, there's, so. in fact, there's a catch basin. Uh, on the west side of Corey Street, mm -hmm. which is uh, which goes to a on an 18 inch duct or something like that under Corey Street to the Glen. So that's where the water always has been going. And, well, it should continue. and it would continue to go, yes, uh, <coughs> as long as the topography stays the same. I'm satisfied that the drainage issues have been seriously considered uh, already. You know, John Eastman wrote his report here. You know, Matt Reed, who has experience in this, has considered it. And uh, John Eastman's conclusion is that uh, any problems that may come along are, I think, what's his words here, simply and inexpensively dealt with. That there isn't some sort of real disaster scenario that we're that we're dancing with here so I'm satisfied that it has been dealt with and that they are serious about dealing with it so you don't you don't really think it needs to be backed up with a um, 
some certified <coughs> stand yeah, yeah, from absolutely. some outside well, firm. Come on. We're the village of Yellow Springs, folks. Yeah. Well, we can have John up here uh, if he again talking about if he has you know, holding his fit feet to the fire. Are you really sure that this is? He's coming. Yeah. Before you get uh, John up, yeah. when I started reading that, I thought that was uh, a professional. Uh, their, their well, it sort of is. He's going to sort yeah. it out for you. But then when I got to the end, when he said personal, then right. <coughs> <coughs> okay, John. John Eastman, uh, Village of Yellow Springs resident, professional environmental engineer. A um, couple things. Bottom line is if you want a, a certified letter with my. Uh, Professional engineer seal on it. You can have that. Okay. Um, so that issue is done. The personal opinion was to try to distinguish that I was representing myself. I was not representing the views of Antioch College or of the solar people. I was representing my own professional expert opinion views, and I should probably have chosen something other than personal opinion because that's been latched onto to be different than how I intended the statement to be rather to be that I was being upfront as to who had requested the analysis, but that I was stating my own <laughs> professional indep independent view and not the view of the college. I don't even know what the college view is. Um, the, there's been a lot of discussion of sinkholes uh, around this, and the sinkholes are not per se a drainage issue. Right. They're, impact they're impacted by drainage and in fact, there essentially are solution cavities in the limestone bedrock. So they're caused by, the same way caves are caused. Uh, it's what's called a karst formation. And the, uh, so there's solution cavities, and probably you could call them caves or channels in the bedrock down below the golf course. And in that regard, the more water that goes down those holes, the more it dissolves more limestone <laughs> and will increase the size of them. So it's, but the, where the location of the solar panels are, the runoff from that part of the ground is primarily going below the sinkholes. Um, another thing that was raised to just uh, clarify is that if debris is caught on the fence, the contours demonstrate, um, and you can get more precise with field measurements, demonstrate that the water could build up a maximum of five feet against the fence before it went around the, the end of the fence and continue to flow downhill, assuming it ever got that high. Um, so, and the elevation <coughs> difference between the west fence and the, the lowest point at the prop west property line of the college is approximately 12 feet. So before any water could back up to the, the prop uh, the, what we might call the President Street properties, the unimproved President Street um, along there, the west side of the Antioch property, the water would have to be 12 feet deep at an eight foot fence before it could get back to those properties. All right. Um, Thank you. Okay. Thanks, John. <coughs> okay. Are we... Then we're okay with number two. Uh, John, John will stamp it, and, and uh, I, think it, I think it's uh, taken care of. Uh, number three, landscaping. Landscaping shall be preserved in its natural state insofar as practical by minimizing unnecessary tree and soil removal and any grade changes <coughs> shall be in keeping with the general appearance of the neighboring developed areas uh, provisions or preservation of landscaping buffers or green belts may be required to ensure that the that the proposed use will be adequately buffered from one another and from surrounding property um, I don't know, I don't know. okay so Uh, are we going to require buffering? And maybe the thing to do is, if, at this point, is to sort of leave that one sitting there, and let's go to the next one. And the next one is screening. It says, where non-residential uses abut residential uses, appropriate sc screening shall be provided in, in accordance with Chapter 1270 so as to shield residential properties from noise, headlights, lighting, and glare. Bill. Well, we know that there won't be any lighting. Um, the glare problem, I think, has been pretty much resolved 
the headlights, I, I don't know how in the world one gets headlights there unless one is coming out of the Antioch school. Um, and what was the other? Th noise. Uh, the noise. <coughs> well, it's 800 feet away, I think, or something like that from the nearest residence, uh, which uh, will attenuate the noise, what little noise there is. Thomas, I can tell me or it's it's a it's a fair distance. Okay. 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 Okay with me. Well, on yeah. their drawing, they're now showing that they provide vegetative screening and work with the village tree committee. That would be essentially on the. Uh, Street yeah. yeah, on sheet two, they have you know the the little visual thing yeah. at the bottom. Yeah. They have a cross section that goes east to west, and so you see the houses here on on the President Street side. But if you look, it, it's 531 feet <coughs> from the <coughs> western edge of the solar panels to the row of, <coughs> to the property the line. Okay. <coughs> so they will get screening. Looks like they're working on the screen from Quarry Street now. Do we want to impose screening on the fence side and the field side? That's the question. So we do plan screening on the west side as well. Yeah. We got a we have a pollination path planned in that hundred foot buffer. Uh, from the residential border. So it'll be 100 feet, there'll be a pollination path going from north to south all the way to Allen. Okay. What's a pollination path? Well, it's a path uh, to help bee populations, one, but it have plantings all down the path. So there'll be vegetative growth from Perfect. north to south all the way to Allen, all the way along the path, and then we'll have the farm uh, the gardens, uh, tree forests. I mean, there's going to be all sorts of visual buffers. <coughs> so, um, once the we're finished, you know, beautifying this, um, somebody looking out from their their residence, looking east. I don't know if they're going to be able to see here already. To be honest with you, as far away as it is, and. Okay, where on the site plan do you, do you show these? Is this what you're this buffer? The future proposed? Is that what you're talking about? Right. So this zone right here. This is not this, this is residential. Yeah, this is something that they're proposing for the future. Um, Okay, that, that's not the site plan. No, this is for the future yes. okay. proposal. So I, I understand that. I, I'm dealing right now with the site plan. Okay, I, and so I, I understand what your point is. There's going to be buffering in, in, the, in that area between the two. Question is, are we going to require any special buffering? <coughs> I guess my only question is on lighting, and, and, and I saw nowhere where this whole area is going to be lit up. Okay, what, what about the point of, of uh, security lighting? That's what I thought my question is. Okay. What that what type of security lighting and how much it's going to be? Do we, have some, do, do we have somebody that can comment on that? Great <coughs> boy, solar powered light. We have experience in building solar arrays in Greene County, uh, and under certain NEC rules, you're required to have uh, safety and security lighting at the point of inverters. We're not using a centralized inverter strategy um, whereby the inverter is over 600 volts, so that's not a requirement by NEC for us to have security lighting in, in this instance. So, so you're not going to have security lighting? There's no, we, we see no need for security lighting relative to code. Okay. Okay. Yes. That answers the question. Yeah. Okay. So. Um, that, 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 okay, Chris Till. <coughs> well, I still have some concern about noise, and 
So the question, th this thing's going to, what was the, the figure, 60 decibels or something like that is the maximum? So what is that, dis you know, over 531 feet to those nearest residences, can someone, <coughs> Mr. Boyd suggested there's a simple equation that can be used. So what does 60 decibels dissipate to over 530 feet? I mean, is it a, I assume it's, it's non-existent. Oh, it's, it would be. It's, it's perceived sound, so there's and tones and things like that, but it, it, there is an equation that tells you about how much it diminishes the earth. I can't remember that right I mean, My assumption is it's, 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 it's it almost zero. Well, yeah, it would be zero at that distance. It's because okay. over, it's measured like 50 feet intervals, I think is what the standard is, but it's been such a long time since I've done that. I just want some assurance that we don't need to put some sort of sound baffling fencing along that the western edge until this <coughs> pollination <coughs> pathway gets. <coughs> okay. So we do have data. On, on, on like we do have data and we provide uh, noise level <coughs> document to the committee. Um, there is a chart that shows that um, for free field every doubling of distance from the noise source, the sound levels will be reduced by six decibels. Um, and so, uh, let's see. At at roughly 640 feet, which is approximately how far the closest residents are <coughs> to the um, to the array, I'm showing a a, a, um, a decibel decrease of about 78 dB, which would be well more than where we start. And so, jet engine um, sounds um, yeah. and so this document kind of describes technically that at the point of the houses there would be no sound emanating from our, our equipment. Okay. So we did we did provide that information. Okay. Okay. So <coughs> and there's also frequency. Frequency has a big part to play in how far the sound carries too. Right. So okay. So plan commission is not worried then about screening the residential between between the um, solar array and the residential area. Yeah. Luxury of distance. I just want to make sure we really consider it, especially <coughs> in light of past experiences <coughs> of the you know, Papineas oh, okay, and all okay, this. Okay. I mean, yeah, got it. So let's go back. Let's go back <coughs> to landscaping. You know, in, in, in which they basically say um, uh, that they re the, we can require buffers. Or green belts for separation. Um, you know, my thought is is, is this: is that, you know, uh, okay, lighting is not necessarily a problem. Noise is not necessarily a problem. I I, I mean, I, I personally think that there still ought to be a buffer there, and um, some sort of a landscape <coughs> buffer or screening along that that fence. Um, the Quarry Street side, or the no? I'm I'm, side. I'm specific. I'm talking about the residential. Yeah, okay, good, good. Okay, I mean you can, we you can go wherever you want to go with this. I'm going with between the re residential area and the solar, and uh, <coughs> uh, I, I think there should be some some sort of buffer there or some sort of screening of that fence or of the array from the residential area. You know, one great idea. I mean, they, you, you guys can do what you want to do, but you know, they they can they can put in what they call harvest harvest harvestable trees, apple trees, pear trees, plant them, plant them along the array. If, if if it's right in with their little their little thing of, uh, you know, they yeah, pick their apples farm. and their pears and their, you know, they can do that or you know or, or you know, but uh, now what if what if they. Too and, tall. and you see them a lot in new housing developments where they put a buffer as like a mound between see my, my, my problem with with see and I have a problem with that. yeah my, my problem with the with the uh, the earth material is that you now you you've disturbed the the absorption of, of the soil we've got stormwater runoff in that area it doesn't seem appropriate. Um, so, 
So we, you guys, you guys can do what you want, and I and I, I think what I read from you for is you don't really think anything's necessary. Well, John, clarify when you're suggesting apple trees or something like that. Is that for the sound or is that for the, the visual, the view of this? Okay. Visual. I don't think we have a sound issue. Yeah. I don't think we have okay. a, a, a light sure issue. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, and we can just move on. Well, the applicant, the applicant, the applicant suggested that that <coughs> is the plan, but they're not committed to it really. That's sort of the future plan is that there's going to be this pollination pathway in there that I assume is going to have trees or some plants of some sort. Bushes, flowering bushes. I mean, that is the plan. That's that's what they're planning on doing. Right now, but, um, yeah. We are committed to it. Yeah. But see, we're approving a site plan. You know, and th this is basically our time now to get what, you know, what the village wants because you can't count on anything down the road. Sure. So we're just, just we're gonna move what, on. What would be the proper wording? What would you think? Provi provide screening. Provide <laughs> provide um, vegetative screening. <coughs> um, I, and you can vary this. You could do you could do trees. You could do um, shrubs of a of a, you know of, you know four or five foot shrubs. Um, There'd have to be some sort of time horizon on it within. X months or years of construction that the vegetative screen is cons is completed. Started. Right, and we you know we could do just something as simple as just say a, veg a vegetative screen would be required and to be approved by staff. staff. Yeah, because not you know we can't. I'm assuming you're not saying well they've got to put 47 trees and I mean just have it very broadly. <coughs> like, just something very general and just have a staff. Okay, yeah. so you you guys are going to sort of buy into that. Jerry. Personally, I would rather see it open. You're going to see a fence. Yeah. And you're going to see the solar arrays. Yeah. Okay. And yeah. if the fence is like the fence I saw, you're not going to see a fence until you, you open yeah. it. So that's why. Okay. 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 We're going to we're going to go to conditions and and. and it, it looks like we have a, a consensus that we're going to do right. some sort of screening. And the signage is, um, we're not going to worry about the signs because they'll have the appropriate safety signs up. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <coughs> Lighting, okay, we've already addressed that. Yes. Okay. Uh, utility service, all utility service shall be underground, uh, underground unless practical. It's, it's been addressed. Yeah. It's to be underground. Um, and exterior uses, and th this is, it says, um, exposed storage areas, machinery, heating and cooling units, service areas, loading areas, utility buildings and structures, and similar accessory areas shall be located to have a minimum negative effect on adjacent properties and shall be vis visually and acoustically screened if reasonably necessary to ensure compatibility with surrounding properties. <coughs> Is it screened? Well, there you are no structures, there are no buildings. Okay, so you, well, you, you, got, you got your transformers. You have the transformers, though. You got your transformers. So, I, you know, I, 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 I think along with this buffering that, that we should require some screening on uh, around the, um, uh, yeah, the I, transformer. Yeah, I'd expect to see the same that we saw. Let's see. Uh, okay. Okay. And so I think... I, I think we're, we're basically done with this this section here. So now what we have to do is that we we basically have to come up with conditions. It, it, we can either approve it without <coughs> conditions, with conditions, or we can deny it. So it looks like the way we're leaning right now is we're gonna we're gonna approve this thing with conditions. So let's articulate the conditions. I guess the only the only condition was that the let's see we had we had the two points we had the one from um, from electrical mm -hmm. basically and, and what, did, what did they say what what's the, the they, they need to identify on the site plan right now they're identifying an 18 inch depth for the utility line but 
what Johnny's email requires is that they, you know, they should comply with what the email is from Johnny. That they go uh, two feet below the sanitary sewer line with the so concrete five feet. slab over top of it. Okay, and, and the slab on top. I would just say that they need to comply with the requirements of, you know, John. That's fine. They, can, they could update the site plan to show or take the 18 inches off and just say that they will comply with village uh, requirements. Okay. So, and that will cover both both the these um, the sewer and the electrical. Right. Um, yes. Okay. So that's condition number one. Condition number two. Uh, you know, the Blocking the transformer. Blocking the transformer. Just the power. Okay, we we, we want we want we want some yeah, landscape right. buffering around the, the um, transformer, and that's that's something that you're going to have to work out with staff. Okay. Also, Johnny had mentioned the DPNL power line along Allen Street isn't identified in Allen Street, right? Okay. Is that correct, Johnny? Okay. So, so okay, that's far, part of the first condition. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay, buffering around around the the uh, transformer. Okay, what about buffering on the on the uh, on the western edge? Can, can we back up with, with the uh, so this is an acoustic buffer around the transformer? Yes. Okay, which might just very well be as in Cedarville, this sort of little six foot or eight foot sections of this acoustic fencing. Yeah. I, I'm assuming. It's usually just a block. See, I wouldn't go there. I would make him do it in landscaping. Oh, okay. Well, I just wasn't clear on what. Whatever's, as they say in the <coughs> whatever's practicable. Okay, fine. Okay. Okay, so okay, sure. we, we, we go so back to, you know, It's on the west side. You got that question out there. I've got a question out there. Come forward. Brentwood Solar Power and Light. I uh, just wanted to clarify that the one transformer is inside the fence. Um, so, just like the panels and, and all of the other equipment, the, the transformer is not outside of the fence, it's inside the fence. So, just wanted to clarify if you knew that or not. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. But, but the screening would not necessarily <coughs> have to be inside. You're talking, right. You're right. The, so don't like that. I think a block would be. Okay, so we're working on this condition number three. Are we going we're going, we're going to require just some some planting? Screening. Yeah. Screening? I would just say screening and let Well when I I I am gonna be honest with you. When I if you say screening it could be a fence. They're gonna go down the road of of, of the uh, of the the, uh, the the paintings, the artwork. <laughs> and I'm not, I, I'm, I'm not for that. I, I want vegetative screening. That's what I want. On the west side of that of the array, if they have all the, the beautiful artwork that they can have, but who's going to see it? Except people walking out in this there. It's, okay, that's you know. I'm there, there's two different. Sorry, Bill. But uh, you know, one of the things that I also did, uh, I wanted to know. <coughs> What, how much visual impact did an eight foot fence have at uh, 90 feet? Now I use 90 feet because it's the edge of the right of way on Corey Street to the fence. And I did a little experiment, took an eight foot board, laid it up against the tree, measured 90 feet, held the, the tape measure up and how much did it impact my visual, uh, it was less than two inches. So when you're looking at the at that from 90 feet, you're looking at two inches of fence line. That's that's the eight foot, uh, which, which is not going to be much to look at. Uh, you know, I especially since particularly on the east side, they're looking at putting in some kind of uh, buffering anyway. Okay. Um, the the other thing to, to remember is that particularly around transformers because I ran into the problem once, you can um, put up uh, screening of one sort or another, and before you know it, the transformer gets too hot because there isn't good air circulation. Yeah, but they're, they're, they're smart enough to keep, keep it away. Well. <coughs> okay, okay, um, Jerry? And, and 
I bring it up because, you know, that's what stood out to me when I saw the Cedarville facility that that transformer had. Uh, you know, at least on, on the, I think there's probably three, three sides. sides, so there was enough air to come through, and I figured that was put there for a reason. Because if you use a three-sided yeah. fence, you can direct the sound. In this case, yeah, you'd want it directed towards yeah. the glen. Okay. And that's why I couldn't hear the sound until I... Okay, I okay. Around. Yeah. But again, it's a long way away, but, but still... You, like I say, you can direct it back to, on the campus, you can direct it towards the glen. Back to okay, I'm trying to get to the end of this. Are we going to do a, a, a screening of, uh, to the western edge? We, we can just simply say screening as determined by staff. Or we could just leave it alone. I, I, it looks like I got two people that don't really want it, so I just need one more person to say, and we'll I, I move on. Say, yeah, well, I guess I'll race it. I, I prefer some screen. So. A vegetative screen on the west side to deal with the visual situation. And it doesn't have to be constructed immediately, it might grow over several oh, years. Okay. Very good. Let's just let's just put it in the in the hands of staff. Say we, we want vegetative screening on the on the western ed edge, and leave it up to staff to work it out with powers of be. Is that clear enough for staff? Mm -hmm. I think that's pretty clear. You're talking about visually screening it from the residential property yes, space. Yes, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, I did want to mention one thing. I I, I wanted to make sure that. Um, because we have to have some discussion on the eight-foot fence and I wanted to make sure would you, would the board be uh, Okay, if they decided to go with a six-foot fence instead They would like to have the leeway to make that decision <coughs> uh, Whether they would go with a six or an eight-foot fence if, if you went with a six I think you got to put racer wire on don't you? Um, yes um, okay. No um, <coughs> Wendell uh, I, th I don't think there's a requirement for the wire on the six-foot fence according to talking with Wendell Ott. We dealt with this with the Xenia <coughs> site, which is in Greene County, and the electrical inspector of Greene County is going to impose one or two restrictions on us, eight feet or six feet with barbed wire. We supposed that eight feet for Antioch would be better than six feet yeah. with barbed wire. Yeah, so I'm those are, that is, there, there is latitude in the code, but we know the inspector personally, and that's what, he's not going to sign off on anything different. So I don't think we have a choice of just six feet and nothing else. He's going to impose six feet with barbed wire or eight feet. But at the end of the day, we're going to comply with the code with what we call the authorities having jurisdiction. Right. So if the authority at Green County does not require the barbed wire fence on top of six feet, would you be okay if they change if they choose to change it to a six foot fence? I believe Wendell talked with the building official today about that and they were saying that it's only a zoning requirement as far as they're concerned for that facility, but you know, sure, no, we, no, no barbed wire. If the authorities having jurisdiction would allow us to do just a six-foot fence we certainly would do that that's cheaper for us and perhaps better for the village but again we're going to comply with what they make us do i just want to make sure you okay okay got we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna go it around the table here real quick you're okay with it i think it would be less tempting for school kids to climb an eight-foot fence okay. than a six-foot fence jerry same Tim? no me too Joe? okay eight foot or the six foot with razor wire. <coughs> okay, I've got a question. I'd rather have just <laughs> eight foot, not razor wire. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and entertain this question, but I'm going to go. This is not a public hearing, so, but go ahead, come up and. I just had a short question. Yes. <clears throat> Chad Stiles, uh, 1425 Corey Street. Um, I'm wondering about in your discussion about the buffering, and I appreciate what you're saying about the, the trees or some kind of pollinators. Um, would you would you consider the Antioch School in that discussion about neighbors? Since I know that's within, I think, 200 feet is when the, where the panels end and the Antioch School begins. So I just wanted to throw that in. I'd like to hear if the applicant has yeah, any gonna, yeah. plans regarding that long term. Uh, Reggie, Brett, Brett, do you have <coughs> you can weigh in, or are you you? Uh, well, um, again, 
the, the future plans we have for farm development um, will provide visual buffers, I mean, throughout the property. We just planted a food forest on the south end of the Island Street, which we're getting a lot of very positive comments on and on how nice it looks. But um, they also have a lot of trees closer into the Antioch School that already provide a visual buffer in, in their view out to the array. Okay, thank you. Okay, so we have three conditions. Anymore. So we've got the vegetative screen on the west side. What about the acoustic? We were talking. The, what's going on with the acoustic buffer on the transformer? The acoustic buffer to be determined by staff. No. Okay. Be more a visual buffer, right? Yes, because I think it's been determined that. Because the noise would be. Should be. Uh, I'd, I'd like to. Okay. Go ahead. I'd like to put something in perspective. Uh, I have a son who's an automotive buff. I get all of his magazines secondhand, and I can tell you that most modern cars, at 70 miles an hour, the internal sound level is somewhere between 70 and 75 decibels, mm -hmm. and you can easily carry on a conversation at that noise level. Mm -hmm. So 60, and the and the scale is not linear. I don't think. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. So 65 is significantly less than that for your starting point. Okay. So all I, all I need is a motion. Uh, uh, John, I, I just want to clarify. So we're, there's going to be no acoustic buffer. It's just a visual vegetative buffer on the west side. No, there is an acoustic. There, no, there is a. So my, my thoughts are there is an, a, a vegetative buffer designed to screen and to, let's say, control noise, even though noise really isn't an issue. Uh, but I want that dealt with separately. I, I, I mean, I, I, I want. I want those transformers screened. Acoustically, with a with with a fa I mean uh, with a veg. No, l l let's just say let's just say I want those those transformers screened. Just screened. Okay. 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 Because we've determined <coughs> that it's not necessary to deal with the noise. Okay. Right. Okay. So, so the first condition is to comply with village requirements for electrical and uh, uh, sewer. Mm -hmm. The second one is to uh, screen the transformer. Mm -hmm. And the third is to provide some, some screening um, on the western edge of the solar array uh, from the residential district. Okay. Identifying the DPL power lines on the site plan too. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that. <coughs> okay. And that was Allen Street? Yes. Yes. Okay, so And I, I'm sorry, did you have any kind of condition about uh, the tree plantings go on? Do you want to attach a specific condition that they uh, fill in the tree screening on the Corey Street side? They're already committed to it. So it's on the site plan? It's on the site plan. Okay. Oh. All I need is a motion to... Um, I'll make a motion to uh, approve the site plan with conditions. With the, with the three, three conditions additions. articulated. Yeah. <coughs> Do I have a second? I have a second. <coughs> okay. Can you, you read that? Yes. Um, so the motion is to approve the site plans with the following conditions. Um, that there is a vegetative buffer to screen the transformer. That the site plan comply with the Village of Yellow Springs uh, standards regarding electric and sewer. Uh, that screening is provided on the western edge of the solar array and that the DPNL power lines on, along Allen Street are identified on the site plan. It's okay, well, screening the uh, transformer, not necessarily vegetative. And, and screening. Screen the transformer. Okay, got it. On, on the screening, are you talking about along the western side of the fencing or are you talking about the western part of their, their property where they're showing the, the pollination pathway? 
Uh, well, uh, if I'm going to review that, I'm, I'm, I'm okay. I, I'm saying along fencing. That's what That's I'm. What saying. I thought we were talking mm -hmm. about the western okay. edge of the array. Western edge of the the array. Inside, outside of the fencing. Outside of the fencing. Outside of the fencing. Okay. Can I ask you why do you want the transformer? Uh, screen when in fact it's inside the screening you're on the west side or you're not? still going to see it you're still going to see it well not if you put the vegetation along not the if west you side put it the on the west side of, on the no. fence the transfer is inside the fence oh, okay okay yeah okay if you can accomplish it, that by putting it on the outside of the fence fine <laughs> yeah, that's why I was yeah. a little confused yeah, it does the same. but my only concern there was a fence was deliberately put up on Cedarville I, we, yeah, we saw so, um, yeah. You know, I want to at least that's what I'm saying. Okay. So are we going so to strike the, are yeah. we going to strike the screening of the transformer? Well, it will ultimately be screened by the vegetation that will be on the outside. So the, the, the vegetative okay, so, it's a, so we, str we struck it. It'll be one and the same probably, I guess. Right. Okay. So it disappears. And I thought Johnny said the DPL power lines were on Corey Street, not Allen Street. Did I mishear that? Oh, he said Allen. Allen. It's Allen Street. Okay. No. What about the condition of use of so? Okay, so we can you go through this again because we just struck the line. Yes. We're moving to approve the following conditions. Um, that that the site plan comply with the Village of Yellow Springs uh, standards regarding electric and sewer. That Screening is provided on the western edge of the solar array outside of the fencing, and that the DPNL power lines on Allen Street are identified on the site plan. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Let's call the wall. Okay. All right. Toby. Yes. Sims. Yes. Bebco. Yes. Till. Yes. Strewing. Yes. Okay. So the site plan has been <coughs> approved with and conditions. Okay, we're moving on here. Uh, that was the site plan. Are you then going to do the conditional use? Is that what you're doing? Yes, okay. yes. We're right, there we go. now. Now what we're going to do? I'm going to find my, my my notes here. Basically, what we're going to do is we're going to reopen the public hearing for information that hasn't previously been heard. This is an opportunity, you know, for for um, folks to come forward with, with the, their concerns. Um, so I, I, I guess uh, well, we'll, we'll go ahead. Um, I'm, I'm opening up the public hearing, so anybody who has uh, concerns that weren't heard the la on, the, on the June 9th meeting, come forward. Point of order, Mr. Chairman. Yes. It's, it's individuals may speak again at different points. Is that correct? Yes. Thank you. Yes. Individuals can speak again on different points. Okay. Now there, there's a fellow back. Back. Yes. Right there. Come. Come forward, please. State your name and your address. And we're gonna. We're gonna basically give you two minutes here. Great. My name is Zachary Sullivan, student of Manioc College, and my address is one Morgan Place. Um, so this is a letter of support drafted by the uh, community. So Antioch College uh, community would like to demonstrate its support for the proposed Antioch Solar Array. The June 23rd special hearing occurs during a break in Antioch's academic calendar, limiting the accessibility of students, staff, and faculty of the college to the meeting. As the community nears uh, the end of the quarter, there's little time to draft letters that fully capture the support that the community feels for the Solar Array. However, the undersigned would like to affirm their strong belief in the value that the proposed array will add to the village of Yellow Springs for many years to come. Uh, the golf course is also home to the much-loved Antioch Farm. It is a space on the campus whose use is representative of our most modern efforts to integrate classroom and community. Students at Antioch see the array as an important pedagogical tool to increase the understanding of photo photovoltaic power, a technology that is rapidly gaining relevance to the local and national infrastructure presence of a solar array on campus is seen as a statement of Antioch's continuing dedication to living by its values. Because of their moral, pedagogical, and ecological motivations, the undersigned continue to offer their full support of the proposed array. 
we felt this was important just because of how many students were off uh, off campus, but even out of state at this time. So we have over 100 uh, signatures from students, faculty, and staff trying to show their support, even though they're not in this room right now. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Reggie. Um, Reggie Stratton, Physical Plant Director at Antioch College. Um, from the last meeting, one of the things uh, that the community uh, brought up as a concern is how we are tying the solar array to our educational values and curriculum. And I want to point out that Barbara Sanborn, our physics professor, sent a letter and uh, explaining how that the educational components tie in. So I just want to reiterate that that it is going to be both. Uh, a power plant for us, but it's also going to be an educational tool. Um, solar power and light is going to have the student working uh, as co-op position um, to help build the array. And uh, we've already had a global seminar on energy where we talked about wind, solar, geothermal with our students. Um, educational kiosks, we're going to be installing uh, out at the array for both the community uh, and our students to interact with. Uh, Solar Power and Light also has a K through 12 program, um, and so we'll be inviting elementary school students through high school uh, out to the array and, and have discussions around the array. And lastly, it's just again, as our students so uh, aptly said, that um, we're modeling. Uh, the correct behavior for our students going forward. Okay. Thank you, Bridge. Mike Kelly, 120 Kurt Street. Thank you all again for uh, carrying us over because I was out of town uh, the last meeting, so I appreciate the chance to, to speak. Um, I think this application is incomplete. I'm glad you guys went to Cedarville to look at the installation there, but it, the lay of the land is much different on the golf course. I can tell you that when there used to be picnic tables where the solar array is going, kids could be sitting there talking and wake us up at 2 in the morning. So to say that the hum is not going to reach our house is not specific to the site that this proposal is being uh, put on. Um, also I think the glare study, I'm not an engineer, but I have been able to see people's sunglasses from this, the site of the solar array at our house. Our house is on Kurt Street, which looks down towards the solar array. So, I mean, I think the study is incomplete to say that there's going to be no glare and there's going to be no sound, because those are two variables that we see right now. Um, we're glad the picnic tables are gone, but um, we don't want them to be replaced with the loud uh, refrigerator humming all night. Uh, I suggest that the um, if possible, that Antioch consider scaling this back so that the effect on the community won't be quite as large as it is. I know that they said that they don't want to, it's not uh, feasible to put any of these panels on the roof or do anything creative like that. They just want to go with another party that's going to come in and pay for it um, and build a big industrial complex in the golf course. But if they can scale it back to a point, maybe half the size, a third the size, and combine it with some more creative uh, proposals like they, like Antioch is known for in the past, that would be a good idea and um, and again I encourage it we know everything that's going on in the golf course Antioch doesn't always because um, we're out there every day we live there so to say it's not going to affect us is not true and thanks thank you right here. <laughs> My name is Hillary Pearson. I live at 1120 President Street. It's at the end of Herman Street. And uh, we do face, our property faces directly um, where the solar panel will go. Um, it's difficult to stand here as a resident um, against a university in town. And it doesn't surprise me that 100 signatures came from the college for a college project. Um, the argument for me has never been about whether solar uh, or sustainability or solar was a good idea. For me it's about the location and the planning. So as you guys consider um, your jobs, whatever your personal opinions are on the subject, whatever your emotional opinion on the subject, 
I would love to just step away from the process knowing that you guys did your due diligence, you did your thorough studies, you're the experts, we know the experts, we go find the experts. Um, I would just like to step away and know that um, we saw the process through. We took our time and, and really asked the right things of the college. Thanks. Thank you. Here. I just want to make a comment, the Faith Morgan, uh, 114 East Whiteman Street, uh, just to make the comment that we had a situation where we live, I actually am living uh, in the Vale in, in the off High, High Road, um, that when, when uh, some trees got taken, bushes got taken down, then all of a sudden there was noise. So I, I really hope that this buffer, I'm for the uh, solar array, but I think that having a um, vegetative buffer along the west side, it will make a huge difference in terms of sound. Okay, thank you. Right back here, yep, no, yeah, you got it. <coughs> I'm Eric Johnson, I live at 401 South High Street, and I just want to applaud you. I think you did a very thorough job. I went on the Cedarville website, saw that they announced and built the thing within four months. And many of the issues that were raised in the GC or the YSOC document um, are not an issue. And uh, I think it's completely exaggerated to say the noise is going to come from there. I think you've addressed it thoroughly. Um, I am putting six kilowatts on my house, on my roof, and I don't expect there to be noise or electromagnetic uh, interference or glare or anything like that affecting my neighbors or myself. So uh, I really applaud you for all the thoroughness you, and I think you've gone to extraordinary lengths. So I hope you move ahead and let Antioch get on the road here because they've been waiting for a very long time. Thank you. Thank you. Really, no more. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> I'm going to read a short letter. Phil, uh, Phil King, 1350 Red Shirt. I'm going to read a short letter signed by 13 people, including myself. The same people who signed the June 17th letter sent to the long one, mm -hmm. sent to uh, the uh, Planning Commission. Now, some of these issues I'm about to read may have been addressed tonight. This letter was written, obviously, before this meeting. Okay. So this letter is a follow-up to our letter of June 17th, 2014. Many of us will not be in attendance at your meeting tonight due to prior commitments. We ask for a continuation of the hearing to your next regularly scheduled Planning Commission meeting. As we said in our letter to you of June 17, 2014, the site plan submitted by Antioch slash Solar Power and Light is inadequate for proper review. It should show underground and above ground electric line and transformer locations and interconnections. It should show setbacks for the fence for Herman Street. We ask that it show mound slash vegetation visual buffering from Quarry Street and residences on Allen and to the west. Further, we ask that a storm water study be conducted and submitted to you due to the importance of the drainage swale on the golf course to a large part of the village. <coughs> the backup of storm water could damage many homes in Yellow Springs due to the volume and flow patterns that exist now. If you do make a decision tonight, we respectfully request a decision in a written form and a copy mail to each of us. We ask that your decision include written findings as to each of the general condition requirements for conditional use, your conclusion of law as to each general condition and your decision. While we believe that the law requires denial of the request, if you do approve the solar array, we ask that an approved site plan be included with your written decision and a list of the conditions you are imposing on the facility. Thank you for being responsive to our request. You want the 13 names, or they're the same names as on the June 17th letter? All right, okay. Thank you. Fine, thank you. <coughs> do we, we, we don't have a copy of that, do we? Of this letter right do here? Do you have a copy of that, that letter? The, the, the June 17th one? Yes. No. Yeah. It was a no, the one in your hand. Oh, no, no. I, uh, okay, can I, we get a copy I of that? I will hand out, I have a bunch of copies here. I'm going to give them to you directly so that <coughs> they won't be confiscated and uh, <laughs> parties. Uh, right here. 
first of all, I want to tell you, I think you guys James. have done it. I'm Barb Cullen Stratton. I live on West South College Street. I want to commend every one of you. I think you've done an extraordinary, extraordinary job. Gerald, Bob, John, from for going out to Cedarville. I intended to go myself, and I didn't get there. So I commend you for your thoroughness. I do want to make one point that I think is very relevant. I've been listening to the conversation about the noise, and everybody's referring to 65. The actual transformer noise level is 58 decibels. It's much lower than that from the beginning. So when I hear people talking still, um, some members of the group discussing noise, and I think about the distance of the, the fence from their property line, I, I really kind of think that almost becomes a non-issue from listening to everybody from the engineering perspective. And I really did appreciate your drawing that demonstrated glare. Um, I'm excited. I'm so excited about the college setting, basically <coughs> establishing this village, this village as an energy model. I'm excited about it as an educational model. And I love the fact that students of all ages are going to be included in this. I'm excited. I'm so pro this project. And I really hope that you can move and make your decision this evening. Thank, Thank you. you. If we don't have any, well. Chad Stiles, 1425 Quarry Street. I just have a really short comment. I also went out to the Cedarville plant and took a look because I wanted to see what, what might be out there. Um, I actually agree with a lot of the comments that I don't think it had a terrible impact on that land out there. And here's why. It was, it was placed in an area with a wastewater treatment plant, um, some kind of a, it looked like a retention pond. Um, I know I describe it in my letter. Um, you know, the fencing and the things like that, really what I saw was it had impact the most on the one house, and I know you guys have talked about the sound and that kind of thing, but it's twice the size. I think it's 10 acres, twice as many kilowatts. But look where it's sited. It's, it's two to three tenths of a mile from the campus of Cedarville itself. Like I say in my letter, you know, I, I couldn't see that Cedarville would put that right in the middle of their downtown or right in the middle of their campus. And I think that's just, you know, it's not an issue of, we, I don't like solar, it's an issue of, I think the siting is just a poor, poor location. That's all. Okay, thank you. <coughs> right here. Good evening, thank you. My name is uh, Ryan Pearson. I live at 1120 President Street. Um, several comments. The first is, uh, this is a technical question. I'm not sure that Mr. Bebko's <coughs> calculations of affordability uh, took into account the uh, issue of perspective based on the change in altitude that Mr. Eastman uh, brought up earlier. Uh, slight change in elevation, as you know, can change perspective uh, quite precipitously. Um, the second thing I'd like to, to point out is in the authoritative text that the applicant <coughs> submitted as part of its application, there is a document uh, from the Massachusetts Department of Energy Resources. I'd like to uh, point your attention to page number four, where the Department of uh, Energy Resources for Massachusetts encourages designating locations in industrial and commercial districts. It also suggests that that happen on vacant or disturbed land. Uh, and uh, I don't think that uh, any of us would agree that that is the zoning for it in this instance, uh, nor is that land uh, generally disturbed, as you generally think of it uh, in this context. So I'd like to point that out um, as a subtle yet important point. Uh, when a government entity like this, who's all for solar panels, uh, puts in small concession points like that, you have to wonder uh, what the true impact of that means. So I'll leave uh, that for you to consider. Something else uh, I'd like you to consider when you uh, go through your conditions this evening um, is this uh, point on page 7. People who lease land for solar projects are encouraged to include end-of-life panel management as part of the lease. We have not heard what the plans are uh, for these materials in 20 to 30 years, not when they're done being used because there's something better, because they're done being used because they're spent. Uh, there is another point I don't have time. I would like to point out that your minutes from the last thing reflect that Mr. Till uh, acknowledged uh, in a vote on a different uh, issue uh, the language in the comprehensive plan. <coughs> I would like to point uh, to your attention, sir, and to the rest of the board that the comprehensive plan has specific language as it relates to this proposal as well. Thank you okay. very much. Thank you.
I'm Laura Ellison. I live at 120 Kurt Street. Uh, the noise is not only an issue of what you do hear, but it's an issue of what you don't hear. A humming will disrupt what we now hear from Glen Helen and the solar panels were cer will certainly disrupt what we now see from Glen Helen. Um, I have doubt. I have doubt um, when we have phrases such as should have, should not have, maximum extent possible, minimal effect, if necessary. Uh, those are all vague uh, uh, terms that are not measurable. <coughs> I would be more satisfied with more measurable language. Uh, I, I was I think it's great that an effort was made today to fill sinkholes, but we've seen that over the years many times. Sinkholes can't be filled. Um, and I'd like you all to keep in mind that what happens on this property affects us 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. We live there, we see it, we hear it, and it, you know, it's, this is our home. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Richard Lapides, 130 West Limestone Street. I'd like to point out that for many decades, we've all been breathing the carbon and smoke and so forth from the very large, uh, essentially 19th, early 20th century power plant that served the campus for many, many years while all of us built our homes all over the village, some as close as, let us say, 600 to 700 feet from that very large industrial, <coughs> truly old-fashioned industrial facility. The fact that that plant has been decommissioned as being and is being replaced by the most up-to-date technology that I know of uh, is of significance to me. And I want to think about the solar, I choose to think about the solar array in the context of what it is replacing. Thank you. Thank you. What information? Yes. I don't believe that they've come out of that smokestack in 50 years. I know their current, I know the operations of their energy are in that building, the lower part of that building. Someone enlighten us. I don't believe that thing has been operative for many, many years. <coughs> okay, I, I don't, that, that really does not have any bearing on, bearing on what we're doing right now. Okay. okay. this brief. Uh, Faith Morgan, 114 East Whiteman Street. I'm 64 and I can remember um, coal dust on the snow from that smokestack. Okay. Um, I went up to Urbana to see their solar array and I don't know whether it's the same size as ours or what size it is. I didn't hear any hum when we walked around it. It is right on campus. It's, it's very visible but it's the fence is black and you, it just, I mean, you basically don't see it from very far away. You see the solar array. And I very much appreciate what Richard Lapidi said. I am in agreement. Thank you. Brent Boyd, uh, Solar Power and Light. I just wanted to make two points about the uh, undertaking and innovation that Antioch is pursuing. Uh, we actually believe that Antioch, through this action, is transforming the, the land in, in, in discussion uh, and it will enhance that land. Uh, it's use of aesthetics uh, with nature, with walking paths, with some type of art park features, community educational benefits. And so we actually see this as an enhancement to the general area and the land. I personally went out there two weeks ago and stood in the center and I looked around and I'm thinking, wow, we're about to transform this land into something very beneficial to the community and neighbors. Uh, secondly, I <coughs> wanted to make the point that Antioch continues to enrich uh, the general area with over 200 acres of green space, walking paths, and, and sitting areas, that, you know, among its campus that's open and available to the community. So they're doing a great job in terms of open space and, and adding benefit to the community. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Okay. 
I'm going to close this public hearing. Okay, we're going to keep going, you guys. Keep going. I, I see no reason why not to, but yeah. we'll keep going. Yeah. Okay. Um, <coughs> do, you, do you have anything to add to this? Um, one of the points here is uh, I'm told to ask the zoning administration, administrator if there's anything to add. Um, well, I will when you get to general standards um, number B. I have some things with that one. The general standards for conditional use number B, the pro proposed use will comply with all applicable requirements of this code except as specifically altered in their approved conditional use. Okay, and one of the, in the 16 page letter, one of the um, complaints actually has to do with uh, the, non the zoning non-compliance. It's number two, it says <coughs> the proposed use does not meet all applicable requirements of this code and they were uh, discussing the fence height. And so I just wanted to touch on that just a little bit because... Um, You're talking about the four foot versus... Well, what they're saying is that um, they, um, they're talking about the height and the setback requirements from Herman Street, right. uh, the undeveloped Herman Street right, right of way. Right. Um, basically for your fence regulations, front yard fences are required to be no taller than four feet. Right. And on the, both of these, these are two separate parcels, one on the north, one on the south side. So they both have, you know, um, a front yard area on Cory and on her, the undeveloped Herman Street right away. Right. Okay. Then the fence requirements then go on to talk about that in a rear and side yard in a residential district, they could have up to a six-foot fence. But in a non-residential area, the six-foot fence could go up could go higher but it has to be stepped back from the side property line one and a half feet for every foot over the six feet okay but when researching that <coughs> yes, if you look at your definitions for front yard once a principal structure is established uh, well let's let back up in this zoning district you have a 35 foot setback requirement from the front setback line and they would have two front setback lines one on either side of Herman Street and then on Corey Street right. so have, um, and that's what this is re referring to that they they have to set back 35 feet for this principal structure and then a front yard fence could not be any higher than four feet okay in this spe specific instance if you look in the definitions for front yard a front yard actually exists between wherever the front of the principal structure is and the front lot line so if you set your principal building back 50 feet your front yard is now a 50-foot depth, even though that zoning district only requires 35. You know, however far back, you constantly have a front front yard setback. Okay, and in this case, you know, where if you had a house, you might put your six-foot fence come you know straight out from the front plane of the house and then to the back side in the backyard. But in this case, they're providing a fence for security reasons. I mean, there is no way that they can just provide a four-foot fence for security reasons and no matter how far back they set their transformers they their front the, the eight-foot fence or six you know will always be in a front yard there's no way they cannot provide it in a front yard so your standard there and B it says that except as specifically altered in the approved conditional use normally uh, a person would have to go to the Board of Zoning Appeals to get a variance for that front yard set or for that front the height of that fence in a front yard but in this case because it is a conditional use this section gives you the authority to vary the code so I just wanted to point that out because that was one of the specific things that um, that yes normally this would not be in compliance with the zoning code without a variance by the Board of Zoning Appeals but because it's a conditional use this board has the ability to provide to alter that uh, without going to the Board Got of Zoning Appeals. Got it. Mm. Okay. Good. Okay. I guess where we're at right now then is that we need to discuss the general standards. 126203 A through G. 
So let's let's go through the standards and make a determination. Um, okay, twelve oh three. <coughs> Here we go, general standards. Okay, so I'm going to read the section. Any request for a conditional use shall only be approved upon a finding that each of the following general standards is satisfied, in addition to any applicable requirements pertaining to the specific use. Um, and there are no applicable, applicable requirements for the specific use. It's, it, it's just A through G. So the first one is, the proposed use will be consistent with the intent and purposes of this zoning code and the vision, goals, and recommendations of the Yellow Springs Comprehensive Plan and vision, Yellow Springs and Miami Township. Bill, is, is it consistent with the intent and purposes of the zoning code, et cetera? Well, I believe in that what we have here is an educational institution in uh, a, what is it, E1? It's uh, EI, Education e Institution. Okay. Uh, and it, while it, one of the benefits to the college is that it, it will provide them with some power, it also will give the, the college a format to lead in education, which is really its main um, purpose. So to that extent, I, I do think it may. Okay, okay. Tim. I agree if it's used as a, as a learning tool, as a future, as, as potential career opportunities for students, that, that is the true goal of it. I, I approve of that, yeah. Okay, um, Jerry. Uh, I'm looking at it from a zoning code, whereby, as part of the, con the zoning code, there is conditional use uh, application, and the community is invited uh, to express their concerns. And I think the, the project has satisfied the concerns. So. Okay. Okay. Crystal? Uh, there's sort of two issues. Number one, regarding the zoning code, I am satisfied that uh, the proposed solar array does uh, fit into the zoning code as an educational uh, tool. As the applicant said, it's not just a power plant. It is an educational tool for this new uh, curriculum that they're developing. Regarding the comprehensive plan and the visioning documents, I realize that there is some competing language in there regarding the value of open space in the village, but there's also language in there to support the college as well as alternative energy sources, and so it's it's a bit of a, um, well, as I said, it, there's competing language in there, but overall, I, I think the stronger argument is uh, for the, the college solar ar array uh, fitting in with the comprehensive plan and visioning statements. Okay, thank you. Uh, Chris, I, I totally agree with you. I've, I've gone through this, and I see it both ways. I it's uh, the comprehensive plan, the visioning statement is weighted down with this uh, promotion of alternative energy. But it also points out, you know, about, about the, the idea of conservation and open space. Yeah. Um, I opened up the comprehensive plan today. I mean, it actually specifically mentions the golf course <coughs> as open space. Um, if you read very closely, though, and this is this is sort of where my decision comes in, if you read very closely to that, they talk about open space that's owned by private people or institutions, let's say, and basically the recommendation there is to make it accessible to the public. I mean, there's it's still in a, in a section where they value the open space, but that that specific section there, you know, it, it's it's about making that area accessible. Yeah, so if I've got to weigh these two, they're, they're both there. If i got to weigh them to weigh, weigh both of these, I, I've got to come down on the side of alternative energy. So I guess the question is, 
Are we going to are we going to vote on each one of these? I think it's a good idea. Okay, so we're going to vote whether. Um, <coughs> if you could read off the kid, the the number, it's twelve sixty two point oh three. Are you on A? Okay, this is twelve sixty two oh three A. Okay. Does it meet this criteria? And you call out the vote. Okay, so I'm I'm calling out, and you're giving me a yes. It does meet these criteria, or no, it does not meet these criteria, right. in your opinion. Toby. Yes. Sims. Yes. Till. Yes. Bebko. Yes. Struing. Yes. Okay. B. The proposed use will comply with all applicable requirements of this code, <coughs> except as specifically altered in the approved conditional use. Bill. Well, uh, one of the things that, that we're going to have to alter is the fence height zoning requirement uh, <coughs> as a part of this. Con it, and uh, because it, it just makes sense from a security standpoint. Um, but otherwise, I think it does. Okay. Okay. Tim. Again, the fence is a pretty key as far as safety and security. Um, were you interested in the setbacks at all? Worried about the setbacks? Well, you know, I would if. I had originally thought that they should be 35 feet back with the structure. You know, in a residential district, or even if a building were built here, the building would have to be 35 feet back, the principal structure. But they would be allowed to have a, a front yard fence of four feet tall, and this is just if, for me to give a permit out over, over my <coughs> desk. Uh, they could have a uh, fence that would be four feet tall and it would have to be one foot behind the sidewalk. So I, I had them, you know, put a um, cross section on the, the, the drawing to give you an idea of, a, of what the scale would be through there. And it, at first I was concerned with that setback, especially because initially when we had first talked about this project, um, they were, rec they were going to be putting the fence right on the right-of-way line so you'd have just a 20-foot narrow you know well 20 feet is not that narrow but it, it is narrow at that distance with an eight-foot fence on either side so I had them put a cross section on here to show what it would be like the way they're showing it now they will be you know 25 feet back from the southern right-of-way line okay and they will only be three feet behind the right away on the north side but totally you have the 20 foot undeveloped Herma Street right of way you have the 25 feet back and mainly they're setting at 25 feet back because of the sanitary sewer line otherwise they probably would have gone with the three feet back they're coming up with the three feet because for every foot over six feet they have to be a one and a half feet back but that only really applies to the side property line um, the code itself for fences says one foot behind the sidewalk, and um, the sidewalk is usually you know right up against the property line. So you'd be talking one foot behind the property line. They're providing three feet on that <coughs> north side. So all in all, you have the 25 feet on the south side. You have the 20 foot right of undeveloped right of way, and you have the three feet on the <coughs> north side. So you're going to have 48 feet, um, and then the eight feet fence. You know. So it would be really up to you. They did put some uh, people in scale here, but they have them on the inside of the fence. But you know, you can sort of imagine the, that scale uh, of a person that's you know five to six feet tall um, through that corridor. Okay. So zoning-wise, it's not the setback that's an issue because you could put a fence one foot behind the property line, but that would only be at a four-foot height. But we, we have the authority to vary that. Yes. Okay. All right. Um, where are we at? Oops. I start. I start. 
Yeah, I agree. On B, Jerry. I agree with both, but since we have the authority to, to go higher. And that it complies. Things. It complies with the applicable code requirements. Okay. I just want to clarify, we do not have to specifically alter the setback requirements. It's only the <coughs> mm -hmm. That's true. Okay, good. Because we, I mean, if we have to all specifically alter the setback requirements, let's do so. Right. If we don't need to, then right. fine. Okay. 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 Yeah, and I, I'm 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 okay with uh, it complying. We do have the authority on on the fence. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, yeah. So I'm 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 fine with it also. So let's. Uh, so this would be twelve sixty two oh three B. All right. Strewing. Yes. Bebco. Yes. We're voting. Toby. Yes on the changing the foot, correct? Not yet. Well, Not no, yet. We're, no, we're basically yeah. just saying that it complies. Okay. It complies. It complies with B. Okay, so that's, we'll do that. okay, yes. Are you sure? Do you want yeah, it to read yeah, B yeah. again? No, no, because I've, I've missed, we're doing the conditions of approval down below. So yes. That's not correct. correct. Uh, Sims. Yes. Till. Yes. Okay. C. Now this is this is the tough one. <laughs> this is the tough one. The proposed use will be compatible with the character of the general vicinity. Again, we're looking at it. it the general vicinity is an educational purpose, and. It, it, one of the benefits is that this will assist the college in pursuing that. So I would <coughs> say yes. Okay. All right. Tim? So I'm in agreement with Bill when you look at it as an education tool. That's the only way it complies with the character of the general vicinity. Okay. Jerry? I agree. Oh, come on, Jerry, you can do better than that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, Chris? I agree with you, John. This, this is a tough one. Uh, there are several ways that this, uh, this subsection can be read. A strict reading of it could almost require no construction in, that, uh, in South Campus. Uh, campus is largely uh, 19th century buildings. And so if they can only uh, be compatible with 19th century building, well, tough luck. They can't do anything on there. However, uh, another reading of it is that uh, a broader and I think a more sensible reading of it is that, that uh, this is an educational campus and uh, other campuses are building solar arrays. And as I said in the last <coughs> meeting, there uh, was a 20th century uh, power plant right across the street from there. Yes, it was, it's a block and a half away or something. And I, I guess there's a debate about exactly when it uh, went out of service, but uh, Colleges have power plants. Certainly, the college I went to, they had a huge power plant. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I really struggle with this. Um, I, I would find myself one day waking up and saying, "No, it's not compatible." And then think about it for a while. Then I would say the opposite. Um, it's very subjective. Um, if, if you look at it in the E1 district, in the educational district, it is compatible. Uh, you basically have Antioch's infrastructure, its power ins infrastructure. You've got the, the wells, uh, you, you know, you, you got, a, I don't know what, what, what's in those buildings, but, but it, this is, to me, it's appropriate for that area. Now, what I struggle with is that you've got the residential area. And it's not necessarily compatible with that. Um, it's far enough away, in my opinion, that that sort of softens it. And the only thing that takes me over the edge is, is this, is that, you know, these folks, by a permitted use, can build a huge building with a huge parking lot with tons of light, you know. And when I look at that, and that's permitted, they don't have to come to us. That's a permitted use. So when I think of it that way, then I, and then I look at this, it softens this quite a bit for me. So I'm going to go along and say that it, that it is compatible with the character of the area. Um, it's, 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 it's difficult for me to say that, but 
that's where I'm going to go. Okay, so 126203C. Sims. Yes. Phil. Yes. Toby. Yes. Strewing. Yes. Bebco. Yes. Okay. D. The area and proposed use will adequate will be adequately served by essential public facilities and services as applicable such as highways, streets, police, and fire protection, draining structures, refuge disposal, water and sewer, and schools. The applicant or landowner will be required to install public utilities, streets, or other public infrastructure as required by the village, state, or other agencies to applicable um, specifications. Dedication of said public infrastructure may be required. Bill? Well, I, I, <coughs> given the type of installation it's going to be, I don't know that there really are any public utilities, and I'll, I'll lump them all together, um, that uh, need to be, that are going to be included in this. So uh, I think that said that section is satisfied okay Tim I agree with Bill it seems like it's since they're not dedicating it to the public um, Jerry I agree also with that. Chris I don't have anything more to add on that I agree with yeah that. I don't think it's applicable yeah but we're gonna vote on it anyhow <laughs> darn right so this is 126203 D D yes Bebco yes Sims. Yes. Toby. Yes. Till. Yes. Stroy. Yes. Okay, E. The proposed use will not involve uses, activities, processes, material equipment, and conditions of operation, including but not limited to hours of operation, that will be detrimental to any person, persons, property, or the general welfare by reason of excessive production of traffic, noise, smoke, fumes, glare, odor, or other characteristic not <coughs> comparable to the, to the uses permitted in the zoning district. Many of those don't apply. I think we've addressed the specific ones that might apply, uh, like noise, like glare. Um, so I think it meets those conditions. Okay. Tim? Well, the noise, again, we know that's going to happen during the day. Uh, it's going to be minimal at night time. There won't be, since it's not producing power, it won't be anything at night time. Uh, glare, um, they're doing the best. It's be interesting to see, you know, down the road if that has to be changed, but I think that'll be addressed. So, yeah, I'm okay. Okay. Jerry? I guess what I looked at at this part, and, and I looked at Senko, which they they covered, but is if it was a catastrophe and they had to move, they would still have to come back to us as a conditional use again because they'd be outside the approved. <coughs> so I'm satisfied. With okay. Okay. Jim or Tim? Chris. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. It, it, it's past my bedtime. And my concern was noise on this, and I sure hope we uh, sure hope we made uh, you know all I can end up was depending on the the words from the engineers and the engineers' equation. My own experience out at the uh, the Cedarville array that uh, and w with the sound uh, requirements we put down, I sure hope we came down uh, uh, in a reasonable way with this. And so I'm going to agree that we have. Uh, satisfy that condition okay okay and my concern like what Jerry said the sinkholes the Antioch has assured us that they will mitigate that problem over the course of time when it <coughs> occurs so I'm I'm satisfied that that's being taken care of yeah we talked about noise and I'm satisfied and we talked about glare I'm not necessarily that satisfied but is what it is so I'm okay with uh, with this myself so let's go ahead and vote on it this is 126203 E 
All right. Till. Yes. Sims. Yes. Strewing. Yes. Toby. Yes. Bebko. Yes. Okay. F. The proposed use will not impede the normal and orderly development and <coughs> improvement of the surrounding property for uses permitted in the district. Bill? Well, I'm, I'm not sure how the, the college would use it since um, they own the property on three sides and, <coughs> and the, the public has the street. Um, I'm not sure how that, uh, that, you know, how that applies. I'm sorry. Okay. Tim? Yeah, I kind of agree with Bill. It doesn't seem to really fall under what we're, since it is all enclosed on the property, so. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I agree. You okay with it, Jerry? Okay. I agree. Nothing further to add. Yeah, I, I, I think the way I look at it is, even though they did not do this in a timely fashion, I'm talking about Antioch, they, they do have a master plan. You know, they, we had a presentation, and so they do have a master plan, so we know sort of the order of, of that area. So, you know, <coughs> you know I, I think it satisfies. Um, I think, I, yeah, I, I'm okay with, with that. Okay, 1262. Vote. We are going to do this. 1262.03. Okay. F. Got it. Sorry. Bebco. F. Yes. Toby. Yes. Sims. Yes. Till. Yes. Strewing. Yeah, yes. Okay, the last general standard. The proposal will not block sight lines from the right of way to existing signs or windows on the front or side of a building doesn't apply there are no buildings that are there okay no signs okay okay I agree I agree it's not an issue and I agree 1262.03 G till <coughs> till yes <coughs> Bebco yes Sims yes Strewing yes Toby yes okay Okay, now we're going to move on to 1264.04. This is conditions of approval. <coughs> now, I hope, yeah. go ahead. What? I hate to ask, but can I get a five-minute break? Or a break? We certainly can. I would be, it would, let's, let's do a, let's do a ten-minute break, huh? Five minute break. Five. Right. Come on. Max, you can have a seven. Five minute go break. To seven. <laughs> <laughs> I know I could. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna get this thing going. We're we're in the um, we're in the conditions of approval um, phase, and um, I want to bring up I want to bring up two things here that were articulated tonight, um, and this is about. You know whether there are certain studies that planning commission may feel feel that are needed before we make a decision. Um, and uh, one is is a, a study on sound, and the other one is a study on glare. And I I would just like planning commission just to you know <coughs> say whether they're they're concerned that we need a study or we feel that we have enough evidence. Um, you know, to um, uh, you know, to not do this, let's say. So, Bill. Well, in terms, if I'll deal with one at a time. In terms of, of the sound, we know that the transformer is going to have a 60 cycle hum, which comes with any transformer, but it really is at a at a, a, a low limit. The, the potential problem is with fans and certainly transformers can be purchased with um, uh, ambient air convection cooling because that's exactly what uh, Cedarville has. On the back of their transformers you will see four or five 
plates that are vertically mounted, and they are cooling plates. Uh, frankly, if there are no fans on the, on the uh, transformers, uh, its noise will not be a problem. On the other hand, f from the information which uh, was presented tonight, it would appear that the transformers which they potent the, what, that they're looking at will, will be quiet enough to meet all of our requirements. Okay. On, <clears throat> on the glare issue, um, unless there is some change over time with the reflectivity of the panels, um, I can't imagine that we will have a problem. Um, so uh, th those two things, I, you know, from my perspective, are, are satisfied without any further studies. Okay. Yeah. Um, the noise, I think, you know, I don't think we need to worry about studies because, again, if, if there is ever an issue at the property line, then that'll be a village complaint. Uh, glare, on the other hand, I don't know if there's a process for complaining to the village about glare. Um, again, I don't know if that's a process. But um, as far as the, with 30% reflectivity off of it, I don't, it's going to be a low level, but again, that's something we haven't ever dealt with before. So I'm just, just saying that part. So. I'm a, again. I'm okay with the noise, but the no, the. Do you feel study is necessary on the glare? I'm Independent guessing study? no, because of it's being so widely used, and they have it's three thirty percent reflective right. on, on purpose right. because they've had problems in the past. Right. Uh, okay. It, as an industry standard, so I'm a, I guess I'm okay with the glare. Okay, Jerry. Uh, Again, getting back to the city of facility, I think it's been up and running about a year. <coughs> so that says to me that the panels at least had a year's worth of wear, and I, I could not see it a, a really a glare issue. In terms of sound, I drove around to both on uh, her, uh, here in Herman Street and so forth, and then went back out to the college and tried to approximate the distance between the two for sound and once I got into each location I heard more sound coming from 68 and so forth toward me you know, and same at the college there's more sound coming toward me from the college and community so I, I just think that sounds just okay so you and I don't think we need that, that, that's <laughs> okay. Chris? I don't think a glare study is required Noise, I really had to uh, put a lot of thought into because uh, I'm, I love peace and quiet personally, and there's you know, specific village statutes about noise. Uh, however, it's, what, 180, 190 yards to the closest houses, and uh, I've been assured that, uh, that it won't be a noise issue, and so I'm, I don't think we need to require a noise study. Okay, okay. And, and as far as sound is concerned, you're right. The village does have an ordinance. Disturbing the peace. Yeah. Um, as I recall, I think they just barely meet it, though. Or they, they, they're, they're 45 dB. Okay. Well, so, so Bill's the engineer. Doesn't sound diminish with the square of the distance? Oh, yes, it does. Yeah. Yep. So it drops off it, very It's quick. not a linear by any means. Okay, I, I, so so in the end, I'm I, I don't think I'm I'm going to ask for the for a study in either area. Okay, the, the 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 next thing is that one of our conditions obviously will be um, an eight foot fence, or we'll, we'll, we'll I suppose we'll, part of our process we we by approving this we approve an eight foot fence. Um, okay, there is a. Um, how about a dismantling bond? If technology changes, um, and this facility ends up not being used, or Antioch 
um, doesn't have the success that we expect and there's a problem, do we feel that we need to require a bond for dismantling if it becomes an eyesore? John, can you explain to me and perhaps some people, other people here, what exactly you mean by a bond? How, do, how would that work? Uh, we recently approved a conditional use for a, a mobile a cell phone tower behind the Bryan Center, and they posted a $40,000 bond to cover any eventuality that the company went out of business, technology changed, the tower became disused, then we have a, a guarantee that we can pay the cost of removal. And so the question is, if the company fails, if the college moves, whatever, uh, any eventuality that the field no longer, the solar array no longer serves its purpose, how can we be guaranteed it won't stay there as a, an eyesore? Okay. So would this be requiring, with the bond would be that the village would dismantle this, or the, the bond would be that a third party would dismantle it? It's well, I believe it would be a third party. Oh, they'd post the bond with us, but then we would contract with somebody mm -hmm. to do the work. Um, I kind of look at this if you know we're, we're looking at this particular piece of the property of the college they've got buildings and they've got other things uh, in our approving this we say it meets all the requirements would we require them to start tearing down buildings and so forth I think the answer is no. I, I think if they did go out of business and they s decided to sell, there would probably be some conditions put on at that point. But I, I, uh, and if technology changes and this becomes obsolete, then you know if they wanted to make a change, they'd have to come back to us again for a conditional use change. So. I, I, I'm not inclined to want to put a bond on Okay, okay. Tim? I see Jerry's points. Plus, uh, like I say, we don't require buildings to be torn down unless they become an eyesore or, or a safety hazard. So I think that's, I kind of agree with <coughs> Jerry on that. Bill? The, the real problem is technology and what it's going to do in the next 10, 15, 20, 25 years, it's impossible for us to really um, know the future along that line. <clears throat> the, um, it, it, if, if, in fact, it's not used for one reason or another, it will eventually become an eyesore. And, the question, and, and that's a real problem uh, with a lot of things in this village that have been, that, that have gone out of useful use, I guess is the way to put it. And they remain, and we don't have any uh, recourse in most of those actions. Here's, this is a, a substantial one. And uh, I, I wonder what um, other installations have done. Uh, certainly, I'm not, um, I'm not aware of, of the details of this sort of thing with other installations. And uh, obviously, uh, the supplier or, or what is it, uh, make sure to get the, the uh, company <coughs> name right, but uh, what, what is your experience with this question in other installations? Please. I'm glad you asked. I was starting with an answer. <laughs> 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 Good, <can> answer. <laughs> there is a private contract uh, pending with Antioch College that clearly states end of life contractual terms and those terms say that either Antioch uh, can decide to 
in the contract after 25 years uh, and ask us to remove our equipment, which we will own throughout those 25 years. Option two is that they can buy the system from us at fair market value in which it becomes their property uh, or they can renew for another five years with no more than 30 years allowed because the IRS values this property to have a 32 year asset life. And so those are the options and so we are contractually obligated to remove the, uh, to remove the, uh, the solar array so if after the contract period they don't want the system any longer. Yeah, so if they if they elect not to renew with you, yes, you can't go into business selling this to the village. You have to remove it. We have to remove it. Okay. So, and if for and, and if for some reason we are in breach of contract, then they have legal pursuits to make us remove it. Okay. I think that resolves the question, at least in my mind. We have consensus here? Okay. Okay. No. Well, then it looks like, I mean, do you, anybody have any other uh, ideas regarding conditions? I mean, I, I think in the end, there are no conditions. No, oh, there is the one about the eight-foot fence. We, we're going to change the zoning code. No, no, no. You, in you, this application. No, you don't. I, my understanding is you don't need to do so. Right. You have the authority to permit that right. eight-foot fence. Okay. In this right. by, by, by this process, we. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, that's a. <coughs> so it, we right, right it's automatic. Now, okay. There are no conditions. Okay. I, then I've got to read this statement here. It says before we entertain a motion on the application, I believe Planning Commission has heard all the information. And that the information contained in the record of the, and the information is contained in the records of these proceedings. With that said, members of the commission are each of us prepared to consider the application currently before us? And I guess the answer is yes. 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 Okay. Do I have a motion? I'll make the motion <laughs> again <laughs> um, that we. Uh, accept this conditional use for this project as a conditional use on the property i think that's the way to say phrase it would that or be correct me. that's approve rather than accept oh approve that's true we are approving it i second it if it's written correctly <laughs> okay then we need to have it read we're having a sign from somebody outside. <laughs> okay, so uh, just to clarify, my understanding is you've already approved the site plan. So right. in, in approving the conditional use, it's uh, assumed that the site plan is thereby... Well, the site plan has those conditions attached, attached right. right? So and this is the conditions. Do we need to use. repeat the conditions attached to the site plan, or can this be as simple as approving the right. conditional use? Yeah, I think that's yes. fine because they've already voted on the site plan and made those conditions. Okay. Okay. So the motion is to approve this project as a conditional use uh, on this property, as indicated in the in the site plan. And uh, was there a second? Yes. Was you? Sure. <coughs> All right. Sims? Yes. Toby? Yes. Till? Yes. Bepto? Yes. Struing? Yes. Okay, so the conditional use has been approved. <laughs> okay, gang, we've got some agenda planning. Um, is there any reason for us to, to meet next month? Please no. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I mean, unless something comes up, we're not going to meet next month. Yeah, I don't have okay. Anything. You, you don't have anything for it. Okay, that's it. So yeah. we need. Can I say something? Yeah. You, uh, you know, uh, being in that I'm at a, a, a stand of feeling and so forth. I, I have to admit, I was really impressed with 
how you guys went about making your decisions and, and, and again. Well, you actually go out and look at yeah. Well, I, Jerry, I'm impressed. I'm impressed that you did your homework. You know, you could have sloughed off. You did your homework. There you go. Okay, I need a motion to adjourn. <coughs> I'll make a motion to adjourn. Do I have a second? I'll second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Okay, meeting's adjourned. There you go.